Take two. Tell me if you can hear me, please, before I get too far into it. This is the second try. There it is. All right. I was, I was feeling it, and you guys could probably see that, but you couldn't hear it. Thanks to the good folks at OBS Software for really screwing that up. That's, that's incredible. All right. And now, your Purdue Barmakers! All right, okay, all right, all right, all right, let's go. Here's the deal, guys, girls, friends, family. Boy, was I ready for that quick cast. I was freaking ready. But onward, upward, hopefully this is better. Thank you for trying again. Here is what I was saying. Before I get into this too much, if you're in Phoenix right now and you're watching this very quick cast, it's early there. It's somewhat early. It's 9.15. And you may have had an enjoyable evening and, and it's, a, it's a bit early for you, but you're also on East Coast time, chances are, because many of you came from Indiana. If you're there, thanks for taking me with you. If you're here in Indiana and you feel like you've been le left out and you're loving the imagery and the sounds and the sights of, of what's happening in Phoenix, as a fellow Boilermaker, I feel you. I'm right there with you. I wish I was there. I am a little part of me is dead because I'm not in Phoenix. But what I'm going to tell you is all is not lost. Here's the deal. Boys and girls, Purdue is just under seven hours away from playing their first Final Four game since 1980, and you're here to see it. What a blessing. What a tremendous blessing. Can't take this one away from us, regardless. But here's the big thing. I'm old. You're old. Let's just, let's be real frank. Even if you're young and you're listening to this, you're still pretty old, okay? Actually, there's some of you guys. Ryan, the other day, the Purdue student who tuned in, he was trying to figure out how to watch the game, where to watch the game. He's, he's, he's young, so he's in a different state. But you know what? Chances are Ryan has somebody in his family that's a Purdue grad, and it's different for us. The old people, we are so excited that our Boilermakers are in the Final Four. There's no doubt about that. But the young men who are going to be suiting up, the young men who are going to be playing the game, they're not done. And I don't find a shred of BS when I listen to them speak humbly about the game that's about to happen. I'm going to talk about my observations of what I've seen the last couple of days, what I've heard the last couple of days as we lead into the, what, 6.09 tip-off, 6.09 Eastern Time tip-off. I'm going to talk to you about something very, very cool that blew me away. Um, and I don't know if, I don't think I've talked about this publicly. I hope I haven't. Um, I don't think I have. But um, it's, it's really awesome. Um, and I'm just going to talk about why I think Purdue's in pretty good shape and why you may be feeling that way. Before I do it, let me thank the good folks that made my sweatshirt. Homefieldapparel.com. Head over to Homefield. Enter Boiled23 at checkout. Get 15% off your purchase. They've got a brand new Purdue hat. Uh, it's got Pete dribbling the basketball. It was just released. It's great. I cannot wait to see their Final Four gear. And also, went on campus. Head towards the fire station. And then go over to AJ's on Vine. Grab a snack, grab a burger, grab a pint. And when you grab a pint, you may be lucky enough to get a boiled sports magnet at the bottom. And you can take that home, put it on your refrigerator. Uh, it's pretty, pretty darn cool. EatAJs.com. Burgers, beef, beer. It's AJ's. It's my friend Adam. So, first off, I apologize again for the audio thing. I, I tell you, I do sound checks. I do even a small video recording before I start. Everything was good, but the thing in the streaming software, the OBS streaming software, if you're familiar at all with it, um, it, it usually is bulletproof. It was not good today. And I have, you know how it is, tons of things, uh, tons of adapters plugging in. And when something goes wrong, you start just scrambling, start scrambling. So what have I seen that makes me feel really good? Number one, a lot of Purdue fans out there. I took a little bit of a poll. How do you feel about the game? Many of you, many of you feel pretty good about this game. I, too, feel pretty, pretty good about this game. The reason I feel good about this game is here's what we know about Purdue. Purdue's been good all season. Not only do they look good by your eyes and my eyes, not only do they beat really, really good teams, but also their consistency and professionalism all season long should instill confidence in you. It should instill confidence in us if we've been paying attention. And if you're here, you've been paying attention because you are a diehard. And so... That's why you feel the way you do. Don't feel guilty about it. Don't worry about it. It's not yours to fight either. Our feelings, our gut feelings. How many times have you had a really good gut feeling and Purdue didn't show up in a bowl game, in a big game, in the tournament, whatever? It doesn't matter. 
And I hate to tell you that. I hate to tell you, get into your superstition, sitting in a certain place, wearing a certain piece of gear, changing your glasses for a certain game, whatever it is. Regardless, that's not the thing that defines the success of your Boilermakers. So don't worry about feeling uh, happy, positive, looking forward to the game. Boy, it's a good way to approach a game because I can tell you, I haven't done it this way uh, this NCAA tournament. I'm real honest. Gonzaga, I felt better about it because I don't like Gonzaga, and I felt good about Purdue going into that game. But most of the games, most of the games, I had a sense of nerves to me. I told you, let's go, let's go re- rewind the, the tour so far. Grambling, I was a wreck because I was like, okay, Purdue's got to get this taste out of their mouth. They got to go beat the 16. Utah State, that game bothered me more than anything because I thought the 8 9 seed would be the worst one, the most difficult. And so I was way off base. I've admitted I'm wrong, and boy, did Purdue prove me wrong. Gonzaga, I liked the Gonzaga game. It felt good, and Gonzaga, uh, one thing we saw there is Purdue can play at any pace. They slowed so far down, and Matt Painter earned his his salary in that one as he outcoached Mark Few. Finally, Tennessee. Purdue played Tennessee tough. Purdue played them in the physical game that they wanted to be played. Purdue can play in that physical, physical uh, brand of basketball, obviously. And Purdue came away with a victory. In Detroit, and many of you were there with me watching that game, Boiler Dowd and I, uh, little LBD and I. Okay, so one thing, I'm Boiler Dowd. One thing that I wanted to tell you guys about, and this I have seen with my two eyes that a Purdue National Championship shirt has been printed by Nike. I've seen it, um, and it's incredible. And I can tell you that when I saw it, it's one of those things, you guys all know how this works. Logistic chains aren't that good where they can produce something in a second. So some things, the early release stuff has to be printed. Well, I've seen it. I'm not going to tell you how I've seen it. I'm not going to incriminate my source. But what I will say, what I will say is seeing that printed on a t-shirt does another thing to your brain. Okay, you start saying, holy crap, this is real. Produce right there. It's, it's within touching distance. It's right there, guys, girls. Two games. Purdue's got to win two games. I said this on Twitter. Purdue had winning streaks of eight, eight, nine, six. Then then they get into the tournament. After losing to Wisconsin in the Big Ten tournament, it didn't matter. Now Purdue's on a four-game winning streak. Max your shortest winning streak of the season, and you're a national champ. How stupid, weird, fantastic is that? So, let me ask you guys a question. You girls a question. Have you been watching any videos, interviews, things that are happening in Phoenix? I bet you have. And what you've seen, have you seen a Purdue team that looks uh, humble at times? Especially when they speak about their opponent. Purdue looks humble. Purdue looks prepared. Purdue also looks loose. I've seen them uh, giving uh, Chase Martin a hard time. Making him run out on the court before everybody. By himself. In front of a live uh, Purdue crowd, a live, very pro Purdue crowd in the State Farm uh, Stadium. State Farm Stadium, I believe that's what it's called. On the other side, I've watched some NC State uh, interviews, and here's what I see Burns is still likable. I, I told you, I like this guy. I like his personality. He seems great. Seems great. But I'm detecting my, my sensors, my character sensors are detecting a little bit of cockiness coming from our friends from North Carolina. Even from Keats, who I think is a great coach, if you listen to his words, that guy speaks with an edge, and I like him for it. I've always liked Keats. I think he's a good coach. But when he talks about Purdue, he seems overly confident. Maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe he believes that his bigs are better than Purdue's, and I think he does. I think he does. Maybe he believes that his guards are on such a tear that they can't come down with Purdue's measly defense. He may believe that. He's talking like. When you compare and contrast the two styles of how they've handled their interviews, how they've gone to the media, and I like the way my Boilermakers are handling this. One thing, one great note. I talked to somebody about this. um, My boss, actually, out on the West Coast. We were talking about the NCAA tournament. He's a a sports fan. He's not a huge fan. fan of a specific team. He's from Jersey. He's a, he's a, uh, a transplant out in California. And he says, you know, the problem that I have with Cinderella is I don't care what it is. When they lose, they crash down hard. They hit hard. And that may be what some of you think. You think, okay, Purdue is 
they've proven it this all this whole year how good they are and they look ready and they look dialed in and the other thing they're due they're due to shoot the ball really really well after that last Tennessee game now if you listen to another thing Terry Johnson and others talked about the first practice when Purdue got on the court when Purdue stepped on the court in the State Farm Stadium State Farm it's not the center State Farm something State Farm Stadium when they stepped on the court though the first couple shots were lousy. Purdue looked bad. Purdue looked like a team that hadn't shot in a stadium. And that's because many of those guys, like I told you for the NC State preview, many of those guys have not played in such an arena, in a venue like this. And that matters. That matters. I'm sure there are quite a few guys on NC State that are in the same boat. But sounds like they got their eye. If you see, there's a video out there of, of Fletch just hitting three after three after three. It's good to see. Um, Like I say, Fletch is the whole, to me, it's going to take a shooter for Purdue to win uh, today, this afternoon. It's going to take one shooter to get Purdue hot, to light the spark, and to potentially put some space between them and NC State, and hopefully it's Fletch. All right, so I've got a couple notes written down. Here's one thing, and Painter said this. It's a great point. Uh, There are two NC States. One is the 17 and 14 NC State. The other one is the 9 and 0 NC State. And Purdue is handling like they're playing the 9-0 rolling NC State, a team that is hot, hotter than any team in America pretty much. I mean, I'm sure there are other. UConn's pretty hot. UConn's last loss came against uh, Creighton. Really doesn't matter for Purdue's preparation right now. But that's, that's a good team. That's a different team, and I think Purdue's handling it that way. I hope they're handling it as humbly as the talk. You never know, right? You never know if a team is really dialed in and really believes their talk until you see them on the court. Like I said, we'll know in about six and a half hours. Uh, That's the first thing. Uh, Second thing, uh, DJ Burns. That's not the first thing. I'm way past the first thing. DJ Burns seems to be the nicest dude in the world. Like I said, in those interviews, you like him. And you watch what he does. Everything's done with a smile. Everything's done with a smirk. Uh, he, He talks trash. When he talks trash, though, it seems almost like it's playful. Now, compare and contrast that to Zach Eady. Zach Eady is a guy, he said it, he said it in his, uh, one of his award ceremonies, if you haven't p- paid attention. He's collected two more Player of the Year awards uh, in the last two days. Um, he'll collect another one sa- uh, tomorrow, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, I believe. But Zach said, I look for something to be mad about, and that lights the fire for me to play. And you compare and contrast those two styles, and it's very interesting. Because I think, from everything that I understand about Zach Eady, this is a legitimate, genuinely nice kid, good person. I hope I'm right. We never know with our heroes. We really don't. And there's tons of examples out there. But right now, what I can tell you, what I know about him, everybody's account of Zach Eadie is he's a nice guy. And he tries to find the mean. And when he finds the mean, he stays mean. And then he gets on the court, he stays mean. He plays with a snarl. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. And you know why? All he has to do is go on social media for four seconds and see the bull crap that's being spewed about him. Regardless, Here's the problem. If you have a problem with this at the, in the center of you, and I told you I have a problem with this, it gets at me really badly. And the reason I don't like it, whether they're saying, um, I saw an Instagram feed, a comedian making fun of Purdue and saying that they get whistled for every foul. Uh, stats, analytics, metrics proves that, prove that that's not the case. It's just not the case. But tell your story. Keep your narrative. The thing that I don't like about it, the thing that pisses me off more than anything, is it it takes away the validity of these games. It makes these games seem like Purdue has getting, gotten aid all the way through. Like Zach Eady didn't earn it, like Purdue didn't earn it, like Matt Painter didn't earn it. So if you want to build the chip on your shoulder like I have and like I have always have, those who know me, there's the place to build it right there. Listen to the social media for a second and, skew, and, and, and stir that fire up. It'll do it. It'll do it because what they're saying is that Purdue didn't earn any of these victories especially Tennessee. And now I'm seeing even UConn fans jumping in preemptively talking about the fact that Zach Eady doesn't get called for anything. And at the same time, um, anytime he's touched, he gets called. Number one, you're showing, like Matt Painter said, and like every smart member of the media, of the basketball media saying, what you're doing is showing your ass right there. You're showing that you don't watch basketball and you sure as hell haven't watched a lot of Purdue. And speaking of guys that don't watch a lot of Purdue, CBS basketball does some things. They talk about um, they talk about the NCAA tournament all the time. And I just saw a panel yesterday. It had Avery Johnson, Tim Doyle, 
Matt Norlander and another guy. Matt Norlander, by the way, for two years has been beating the drum that Purdue's a really, really good team. He's been consistent. And when someone asks about him, he knows what to say. He knows that the narratives out there aren't true. Compare and contrast that to Avery Johnson and Tim Doyle. If you get a chance to watch this pregame, this this drivel that they put out, you'll hear two guys talking about Purdue that have clearly not watched hardly any Purdue basketball this season. They'll say things like, Purdue hasn't been challenged by a big man yet. It's the freaking Big Ten, gentlemen. Do you not understand that this is where big men come to grow up? This is the whole thing. Purdue plays big men night in, night out. And when they're not playing the biggest, strongest guys, they're playing two guys that have decided they're going to try to victimize Edie. They're going to try to beat the hell out of him and make everything hard on him. That stuff makes me nuts. These guys are paid a lot. I am not paid anything, and I do more pregame than they do. I am positive of it, and I don't do a lot of pregame. Uh, finally, um, again, as you get close to this tip-off, as you get close to the tip-off, it's okay to feel good about it. It's okay as well if you've got the chip on your shoulder. It's all right. Nobody should tell you how you feel, how you shouldn't feel. And if you didn't make it to Phoenix, that's okay too. I'm with you. I feel horrible about it. I'm still trying to find a way. I've gone every, every day. I've spent two or three hours trying to find a way there that fits in the schedule and fixes my budget. And if you're anything like me, the budget is a big deal. <clears throat> I wish it wasn't. People can say this only happens every 44 years. That's true. I lament that. I lament that. Number one, I have great faith that this is not the last time this is going to happen for Purdue in my adult life. In fact, I think, I think it's going to happen relatively soon. When I say relatively soon, really soon, actually. Indianapolis is in 2026. Purdue is going to be back. It's my opinion. I think that Purdue team could be absolutely monstrous. If Purdue can stick to the edicts, the things that have made them special, the, the pillars that define this program, meaning guys stick around because you recruit the right guys that want to be at Purdue, if Purdue has those guys coming in, which I feel like they do, Purdue's going to be absolutely beastly and terrifying for teams in a brand new way. They're going to be faster. They're going to be act, uh, athletic. They're going to be a more complete team. We can talk about that later. We can talk about this that this weekend. I've hinted at it over and over. But right now, right now, here's the thing. If you didn't get there and you're like me and you're stuck at home, whether in central Indiana or someplace else, and you couldn't get there, all is not lost. All is not lost. I hope we're not taking for granted, number one, because we shouldn't do that. But at the same time, don't beat yourself up too bad if different factors didn't get you there. A lot of you guys are in my boat. I know that. doesn't feel like it. And that's what social media does. It makes you feel like you're the only person. You're on an island out there. But I can assure you, I'm getting together with a bunch of Purdue alums, a bunch of my friends, a bunch of my family to watch the game. And uh, they were in a similar, similar situation as you. So that's about all I've got. Let me open the, uh, the comments so far. First off, thank you to those of you who tuned in the first time when I failed. And you came back this time. I saw the comments. I was like, dag nabbit. It's already been erased from the internets. But it happened. I had a three-minute silent podcast, like an old-time talkie movie. Or not talkie, that's before. The silent films. Talkies replaced the silent films. So I apologize again for that. Uh, I don't like doing that because I know some of you guys were ready to go. I was ready to go. Zachary Young says, There's it is. there it is. There's that need to be in verse. Sound is 10 for 10. Excellent. Kevin Albuquerque says, Perfect. Adam P. says, Yes. Uh, uh, Oka, Oka Bue 13 says, uh, Hear ya. Uh, Will Hardy, all good. Ron Gable, thumbs up. Corey Apple Boiler, thumbs up. We're good. This is all good. Loud and clear. Uh, R.T. Huxley says, uh, Harry's is packed already. That's awesome. That's great. Um, good to hear that the locals at Purdue are feeling it and uh, enjoying themselves. Uh, I can't wait to be on campus, regardless of when I go next time. Um, I've got preliminary plans to be there on Monday, and I'm also still trying to get to Phoenix, honestly. So uh, never say die, but mercy. I'm, I'm making myself nuts with this pursuit. Uh, Nita need, need said, we had no sound, but we had all the handsome, all good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not handsome enough to pull a silent podcast. I'm not. I'm not that guy. Um, I, I don't have J Money hairline or a niche face. Uh, Adam P says, "Good morning from Phoenix." There we go. That's what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear from boilermakers that are there and they've brought boiled sports with you. With you, I love. I love hearing about it. Boiler Bruh, eighty-two says, "BTFU." Jason D, 
says the first take uh, was still better than listening to Tim Doyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I tend to agree. Tim Doyle will assault your eardrums. Adam P. By the way, that goes back to when he was on BTN. That dude made me nuts. And I think he's a decent person away from the camera and off the camera. I uh, love his son uh, from what I've seen on the, the videos on, on Twitter. It's awesome. But he seems like a great dad. He is a bad broadcaster. Not everybody's made to broadcast, I can tell you. Uh, Adam P. said, so much gold and black. Love to hear it. Ted Berkey, boiler up. Kevin in Albuquerque says, 815 in Phoenix. And I know, Kevin, you were, uh, you, were, you were driving in. That's awesome. Saw that yesterday on Twitter. I think that was you. Um, really fun that you guys uh, were keeping people uh, with you during the drives in, during the uh, voyages in. It's great fun to watch. Olive Jazzer, Olive D. Jazzer <clears throat> says, <clears throat> I don't understand. I'm always like two minutes late to these things. I don't either. I don't understand why uh, YouTube doesn't tell you guys on time. You're not the only one. I can tell you that much. I have family members and friends that say the uh, uh, notifications don't work. Um, actually, I, I, I forgot a point. I forgot a point, um, and this is a good point. And so my friend uh, Ryan, who's not on here, we talked about this a minute ago, and he said, he said, here's one thing, one advantage that NC State has had. They haven't had a full week with really good coaches to prepare for them, to prepare for this version of them, right? Even, even during the Sunday to Thursday or Sunday to Friday, whatever, um, those weeks, they haven't had a full week. Matt Painter has had a full week, Matt Painter and company, has had a full week to prepare for NC State. So this one, to me, this is on the coaches. They've got to be ready, and I have a feeling they will be ready. And I have faith in this coaching staff because they've given us reason to be faith and be faithful in what they're doing. They've It's worked, right? It's flat out worked. So it was a great point by Ryan, and um, I don't know if he's on here. But I know he's listening. He said he's traveling back from Tennessee today with his family. Also not in Phoenix. <clears throat> Austin Ray says, watching live from Phoenix, uh, Boilers by 90. That's a good That's a good pick. It's confident. Benjamin Pagano says, on one morning, and, on one this morning, and I love it. <clears throat> on one this morning. And, okay, I don't know what that means, but awesome. It's great, Ben. Love it. Need to be in verse says, my playlist at the gym this morning was all Purdue hype videos. Yeah, and there's plenty of them out there to make you feel good. Tim D says, uh, you guys have to find this man a private jet ASAP to get him to Phoenix. Yes, I agree, Tim. They, that really needs to be done. I think it's absolutely imperative to get me <clears throat> on my first private jet flight. Yeah, I would love it. There's a lot of lot of Purdue uh, people that own planes that are waiting to get off the ground. So, yeah, ringy dingy. Give me a call. Send me a direct message. Ted Brady says, missing this in uh, East Tennessee, 30 minutes away from North Carolina, directly in enemy, enemy territory. Get a win. Go get him, Ted. Uh, appreciate the people that are fighting the good fight. Alfred Dowd. Alfred Dowd, my favorite commenter, says, Hi, this is Mom. Okay, you need to be a little more excited. Boiler up, hammer down. Yeah, so my mom has pirated my dad's um, uh, username. Not cool, Mom. Get your own. Get your own. So then I know who I'm going to read from. Also one of my favorites, though. Full, full. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been here long enough. I used to say, Mom, thanks for watching, because my mom never watched the podcast. Never. And so that was the whole point, is that, number one, if you're in your basement recording podcasts, uh, you know, you're in your mom's basement, generally, right? So that's a joke. And the second part is my mom does not watch. I'm glad she's here. Will Beagle says, mom and dad in the house. Very, very unusual circumstances. We've seen this twice in the last two, three weeks. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Ted Berg says, uh, head says we are good and will win. Heart is worried about the heartbreak. PTSD. I get the PTSD part. Forge forward. Forge forward. You're, we're going to be fine. Tim Swartzel. Yep, feeling good, nervous as usual, but we, we looked locked in and ready. Kevin Albuquerque says the whole uh, we're on a business trip attitude is con conducive to staying on target today and Monday. Nolan23 says morning Dowd, our time. Whose time? Our house. What? I don't know what's going on. Morning Dowd, our time. It's our time. I agree. I was out of, that, was, that was out of order. It's our time. It's our time. It's time for paint. Paint broke through one ceiling. Let's see him break through another one here in the next three days. Um, Tim Swartzel's lots of Purdue people over the valley. It's awesome. Great to hear. Uh, our time. Whose time? Our time. So there he said our time, and then whose time, and then our time. Whose house? Our house. Adam P. says, uh, chatted with nice NC State fans. Uh, could there be some way to kick Illinois out of the conference and let NC State in? It's one of the teams that a lot of people are interested in bringing into the Big Ten, especially with the ACC preparing to splinter and shatter like glass. 
uh, not splinter like glass, but shatter like glass. Um, I like NC State. I said that in my last podcast. I like the I like the place. I like the people. I like I like the whole thing. It's like a Purdue in the in the near south, near southeast, near southeast. It's um, uh, it's a it's a great place. I, I mean that. I got nothing against NC State. I'll keep saying that. I got nothing against them. Boiler Bra 82 said, what's the ratio of fans from each team in Phoenix as Purdue showing out? Boiler up. And only the Phoenix fan, Phoenix people can na- answer that question. I'm sure they will down low here. Adam P says, finding UConn fans is like where's Waldo game. Yeah, they'll blame uh, airports and they'll blame hotel uh, organizers and the NCAA. If you haven't been on there, UConn is the victim. They're the horrible victim. They've created a monster uh, just like winners do. It's incredible. A team that good has made themselves into the victim. Whatever. Um, uh, Purdue, Tim Swartzel says, Purdue is spurring up. To my eye, we are dominating the game, uh, though everyone else will be rooting against us. And I think that's completely true. If you're not a Purdue fan, you're rooting against Purdue because NC State is the darling. Adam P. says, Boiler Bruh, I'd say in downtown Phoenix last night, 75% Purdue, 20% North Carolina State. And I've heard this report multiple times as people have gone out to get something to eat. In-N-Out Burger, for instance, I had this report. Went to an out Burger. Everybody except for two people were Purdue in there. I love hearing it. It's good for my heart. Uh, I love in and out Burger also. Not good for my heart. Nemanja Chalison says, I really thought uh, going to the elite game in Detroit would suffice and feel like we didn't need to go to Phoenix. It didn't. So the itch is still needing to scratch. He continues, uh, I also felt like it was one of the leaders, the baby boiler, uh, the university would uh, comp me. They didn't. I also felt like. As one of the leaders of the Baby Boilers, the university would comp me. They didn't. Okay, yeah, no kidding. If you're really Nemanja Chalison, which I, there's no way you are, I, I'm already on to you. Um, it's a great, it's a great username. But uh, yeah, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna go in any place without anybody noticing you because your height and who you are. Uh, the Purdue family rolls deep and stays strong. So uh, let's see. Gosh darn it, this this software is killing me. Um, Ack. Wangu Swan says, hi, Nemanja. Nice to have you. Uh, very, very good follow-up. Matt Keller says, uh, I got my Final Four shirt ready. Rock it, Dowd. Are you going to rock your hat and shirt today? No, my shirt is dirty. I am not. Um, and I, I, I'm going to go hatless because I'm already warm. But uh, we, we could, I mean, it, it, it's not like it's dead. And, and if you're anything like me, you're going to buy way too much Final Four gear. If you're anything like Anish, I think Anish has spent like $7 billion dollars on Final Four gear. He spent a day shopping for Final Four gear. Um, and I, I believe he succeeded and bought many. So there's more to come, though. This is why I, I'm throttling a bit, a little bit. I already, I already have bought stuff, but I'm throttling a bit. I've also bought a bunch of patches. The Final Four patches, you can find them on e- eBay. And I would highly suggest you do that. If you want to retro your favorite hat, get that thing embroidered right on the side or stitched right on the side, whatever you want to say. Really good update. Kevin D says, hello from Phoenix, coming from Chicago. Tons of Purdue fans, handful of NC State fans on my flight. So I'm no UConn or Alabama, uh, but that may be a geography, airport hub logistics things. Yeah, yeah, where they're coming from matters. Who's Johnny says, I agree with, uh, we need like six three balls from Fletch. Uh, I think outside shooting is the key today. And I think that's kind of a tall order. NC State's a good defensive team, so uh, this is going to come back again. I'll put it right back on the coaches and creating action and movement that opens up the game. Also, I think it's going to come back to Zach Eady making good decisions with the ball in his hand. So he's going to get the ball, and then he's going to have to do the pump fake, wait for the defense to react, and find the open man. So let's see how that goes. Will Purdue knock down the open shot today, win there, getting the opportunity? I would look for Mace Gillis specifically to hit a couple threes in the corner. That's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for. Uh Fletch is the is the uh X factor, but Mace Gill is hitting the corner three. Uh if we see one early, that's a sign of good things to come. Um Nathan Sheets says, so proud of how our players and Coach Painter have interviewed. Players seem wise beyond their years and I get something from Coach Painter every time he talks. He's been at the top of his game. Absolutely stellar. Sterling interviews from Coach Painter. Um if you didn't like the guy before and you don't like co- and you like college basketball and then you've listened to him this week and you still don't like Coach Painter, what the hell's wrong with you? Seriously, so much insight about everything. There was a weird thing when Zach got one of his um, one of his awards. Some people started hammering him with NIL questions. Very odd. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was the secondary award that he got that day. The second and the secondary. 
It wasn't the AP award, but I thought it was really odd round of questioning. And I'm surprised the, the people, the, the proctors didn't do more about it, but still he handled it like a pro. He's done a great job and, and painter's been awesome. Dick Stillwagon says, hail Purdue. Adam P says, who's Johnny? I'll be your witness. Uh, you said that you're first. Uh, what did he say? I missed it. Um, I'm telling you, this, the software is killing me today. David Dillman says, UConn fans are genuinely scared of having an actual competition. Good. Uh, good. Uh, I hope I hope they get there. What a, what a dream matchup it'd be for college basketball fans. Real college basketball fans have been looking forward to this one really since November. Let's be real honest. Um, Kevin D says, would love to play UConn in the national championship. Got to get through and focus on NC State first. Maniacally, Steve, anyone else feel like the trash talking is mostly not coming from NC State fans? I have not heard trash talk from NC State fans, honestly. So uh, I haven't heard a bit of it. And like I said, I like NC State. I like everything about them. I don't like their colors because I don't like red. Uh, but I look good in red. That's the hard thing. Uh, Tim Swartzel says, uh, wait, wait, I'm going to go ahead. Typovich says, is it true that Final Four tickets are mostly bought by Purdue fans? Yes, it's true. Uh, there are a couple sources that are reporting that most of the secondary market, the Ticketmaster market, is being gobbled up by Purdue, and it's, it's from what they're saying, three to one, pretty much, or uh, however you want to say it. The combination of the other three schools in the, the home states, the ticket sales are coming out of Indiana. Jim Marvin says uh, Purdue will be good going forward after the season, but Edie is a generational talent from size and production standpoint. Don't be surprised if the defensive approach changes. Uh, yeah, less drop coverage. Yes, it will change a little bit. It will change a little bit. And it's going to be interesting to see how Paint handles that. Paint has been so good in morphing and changing his style. I think he'll do it again. We're not going to talk about that now, though. We're going to keep talking about this weekend. Uh, A Boilers, AY Boilers says, in the air uh, on final approach to Phoenix, let's go. That's awesome. Uh, I'm uh, I'm being broadcast into the, into the ether. Very, very cool to hear that you're up there listening. R.T. Huxley says, uh, want me to drive you. I would love you to drive me in a really, really nice, fancy car. Someplace, something I can lounge in. And I'd like snacks in the back, too. Yes, thank you, Huxley. Uh, David Dillon says, I was so glad to see someone other than Hurley win the AP Coach of the Year. Yep, that was, uh, in case you didn't know it, um, I use old favorite coach, Kelvin Sampson, won the AP Coach of the Year. And also, for some damn reason, uh, Boo Booey won Defensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year. Nice job, AP voters. You've discredited every other award you've given out this year. It doesn't make any sense. Um, he's a good player, but defensive player of the year. Nolan Osteller says, if we get to the natty, let's all watch in West Lafayette. <clears throat> this is my, right now, this is my plan. And I, and I don't know if I've said that publicly. Right now, that's my plan. I'm planning on being in West Lafayette for the championship unless I can find a ticket. Uh, or pardon me, a, a, a flight. It's a flight. So... Um, maniacally, Steve, yes, I want to be there. I want to feel the, the, the energy of the students when it happens. That's really, that's what I want to be there for. Um, Alfred Dow says, silent or not, you're the best. <clears throat> Thank you, mom, dad, whoever. Appreciate it. That's mom. Dad wouldn't say that. Uh, C. Metzger says, I don't know. Purdue's guards haven't been tested yet. Purdue's guards haven't been tested yet. Uh, in what way? In what way have Purdue's guards not been tested? In the tournament have they not been tested? Is that what you're saying? Maybe. Uh, they've been tested all year, and they played against good guards. Illinois, does that count? Uh, having one, playing one of the best guards in America, I think that counts. I think that counts. So I think you're talking about the tournament, but yeah, I, I, that counts. Purdue's, Purdue's battle tested. Josh Deach says, uh, I'm just shy of 41 years old. I've waited my whole life for today. Wish my dad was still here to see it. <clears throat> He is the reason why I'm a Boilermaker and the Boilermaker fan in the heart of Buckeye country. Cheers to your dad, Josh. Cheers to your dad. Cheers to your family. Holding the line. And, um, man, it's tough when you're surrounded like that. I, I've lived away from Indiana a couple times in my life. Never lived in hostile environment like Ohio State, Tennessee, Michigan. I, I, I've worked in Michigan. <clears throat> but I've lived in Jersey and Boston for short stints. So uh, Boston was a little bit longer. Not that hostile out there. Just bad accent. Boiler Breath says, uh, BR just made the post that 60% of public on pack. Boy, I have no idea. I, uh, I have no idea. Matt Keller says, if Purdue plays their game, they will win. Hit their free throws. Don't turn the ball over. They win. The turnover deal is the biggest deal, probably, if you're going to say a starting spot. 
for Purdue success, obviously, that 13 turnover mark is a big deal for Purdue. Keep it under 13 turnovers. Keep it under 10 for really good measure. So Braden Smith is going to be important, obviously. Everybody's important. Everybody's important. But if you're looking for an X factor, that's up to you to decide who it is. Adam P says, stepped in the Hyatt last night, saw Lance Jones and his mother and also Miles Colvin. That's Purdue's hotel, I believe, and it's marked up as it. They had some really cool stuff if you haven't seen on the interwebs. Uh, you go in there and they have a bracket of Purdue's road through the tournament in black and gold with Purdue on it, prominently displayed, and it is awesome. Uh, it Purdue, I think Purdue Sports has posted it, so have some other individuals. It's really cool to see that stuff. Seeing Purdue on the side of the State Farm Stadium, uh, State Farm, what do, what do we call it? Sorry. Um, that is incredible. Like to me seeing Final Four and Purdue, that type of visual gives me goosebumps. It, it, it. Every time, it puts me back on my heels and makes me pause. Love seeing it. Uh, David Doman says, my favorite part of this week was listening to Painter and the team in the press conferences. A lot of great questions and answers. Yeah, they've been great. They've represented Purdue, represented you well if you're a part of the Purdue family. Chris Becker says, Dowd, which recruit coming in gets you most excited? Uh, yeah, it's Catchings. Uh, catchings and um, the, the, whole, the whole group gets me excited. Bender is my guy who's the, um, uh, the dark horse to be. Uh, really, really special. Nobody sees him coming. Um, yeah, I just, I, Harris is going to be great. I, I just, they've got, <clears throat> it's, it's a great recruiting class. And I, I've analyzed that. So, but I will do it again and we'll talk about the incoming uh, team. We got lots of time to talk about it after the season, regardless of when it ends. So, uh, maniacally, uh, Steve says, calm yourself, Chris. I think he's saying, don't look forward. Enjoy today. Raul uh, Cromarthy says, on campus right now, nostalgia hitting. <clears throat> That's awesome. Glad you're there. Uh, I don't know if you're going to stay the whole, you know, until past Monday. It's cool to be there. Really cool to uh, be around that energy. I'm sure it's a fun place to be. Adam, Tur Adam Burke again says, uh, watch Game 5 prep video from Boiler Ball accounts narrated by Hummel. It's awesome. Yeah, it's good. I wish they would have recorded his, his um, part of it with a better mic because they've done such a good job with their audio quality, like, I watch it on a big screen with a Bose center channel and a, and a sub. And that, you know, that post-Tennessee game video was incredible. Like, just absolutely put you on your butt. Awesome. The sound was great. That was a really good video. It's only, what, a minute and five seconds, minute, 15 seconds, something like that. Um, but I need a little bit better Robbie quality, I'll be honest. Um, Motor City Boiler says, it would be nice if Edie didn't get in foul trouble tonight. Uh, hardly ever does, but this would be a bad night for that. Yeah, I think we've all thought about that scenario, right? Purdue's managed okay when Edie's gotten in foul trouble this year. Even when he's when it's happened, Purdue's kind of hung around in games and waited until it was okay to bring him back. I think Painter will actually handle things a slightly different way with that. But if he gets in, you know, foul trouble in the first half, obviously he'll take a seat. The good news is the guys behind him are ready, and I mean that. I think Purdue has a lot of guys that. I think Caleb first is, is so underrated. I think his ability to make plays with the ball in his hands, the ability to um, to use his footwork as an advantage against bigger guys um, is really noteworthy. And uh, and he's also, what, 6'10"? 6'10 and strong as an ox. Not a bad place to be. So, yeah, I like Purdue's bench. Nemanja says, uh, my nephew, uh, who is at, the, at Purdue now, didn't know what double swipe – steak night was at the dining halls oh really um i'm questioning his his generation of boiler students yeah you gotta take advantage of steak night period but let alone if you can get two go get it and um yeah where, where, what dorm is he in namanya it's a good question um all the dorms have changed they're all different there's more air conditioning than there's ever been carry quad is half air conditioned big difference from where it was when i was there and my son is going to live in a pretty fancy dorm i'm pretty sure um which is great because he's smart and he earned it. But um, I, they didn't invite me to that. Uh, Maniacally, he says, damn, I hate typing on my iPad. Sorry. He, I, I, oh, that must have been something up there. <clears throat> ben uh, Kolodzinski, we've got, uh, we've got a real professional among us. Says, always handsome. Let's make history. Thank you, Ben. Great to see you. Thank you for checking in. Uh, always fun interacting with you on the gram and on Twitter. Ken Simpson says, I'm looking for Mason to have a huge game tonight. Mark Garrity says, uh, Owen for me. Owen, uh, yeah, Owen's a classic. Owen's a hot dorm, just like Tarkington, where I lived. Uh, the window situation's not great there. And neither is insulation, let's be real honest. But 
Yeah, I was Tark, or I was Carrie and Tark. Um, Nemanja says, uh, Carrie Quad, like you, did get uh, did get a green beanie, beanie, maybe not old enough. I didn't get, I didn't, did I get a green beanie? No, I didn't. And Nemanja, um, you're telling me the story that you are not really Nemanja Chalison, and that's awesome. So green beanies predate me, and I graduated in 1997, got on campus in fall of 93. So, yeah. Um, I think my dad could speak to this, actually, and he's not on it because my mom's pirated his his name. So, um, R.T. Huxley has an important question. Who's officiating? Well, I, it's not Courtney Green. That's what we know. He's the auxiliary. He's the alternate. So that's the good news. And that, for me, is the end of today's quick cast. We are at 40 minutes if you were betting at home, and I'm not going to look down at the comments even because I'm not going to do that. I'm just not going to do it. So I'm going to hold the line here. But thank you to those of you who are tuning in from Phoenix. Those who are tuning in, tuning in from Tennessee or on the road. Those who are in the, the deeper south. Maybe they're on spring break with their kids. And then those who are fighting the good fight in North Carolina. Those who are in Ohio. Those who are in Indiana. Those who are in Oregon. Like my friend Ken, who continues to kick cancer's ass. Go get him, Ken. And uh, shoot a fly. Glad you guys are here. If you're listening live or if you're listening on tape delay, uh, what a great deal. What a great position to be in. We're preparing for the final four. Our boilers tip off at 6.09 Eastern. That is what? Six hours and what? 12 minutes? 13 minutes away? It's really happening. God bless you. Hammer down. Talk to you soon. See ya.